Hello, Accelerated Math 7 8 students. Um, we are turning to the table of contents of our book, and I would like for you to write in there multiplication and division of integers. Um, I find my work for this on page 16, so I'm going to turn to that now. Sorry, I have to grab a piece of paper real quick. So, just as the title says, we are still working with integers and we are going to try multiplying and dividing them today. So, our goal for today. Today we will learn how to use integers in multiplication and division. The question that I want you to be thinking about is, what are rules used with multiplying and dividing integers? There are a couple, um, and hopefully we, by the end of our lesson we can figure them out. So the first thing that I want you to look at for me is let's look at these two problems right here. First, you have 3 times a negative 5, and then you have a 5 times a negative 3. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to identify the products, or not the products, the factors. The factors of these two problems need to be labeled. And this is how we're going to think of these types of problems when we're working with integers. The first number in the expression is going to represent the number of groups. The second number in the expression is going to represent the actual numerical value that you're going to be working with. Again, the first number represents the number of groups. The second number represents the numerical value that you're working with. Okay? And so, this basically says that I need three groups of negative five. Everybody say that with me three groups of negative 5. So if I have three groups of negative 5, this is what it should look like. Negative 5 plus negative 5 plus negative 5, remembering that multiplication is the same thing as repeated addition. So if I just keep adding the same numerical value this many times, then I have represented three groups added of negative 5. So I have three groups or three groups of negative 5 plus negative 5 plus negative 5. That happens three times, and the numerical value is negative 5. Now, this one, however, is five groups of negative 3. So you got it, five groups of negative 3. So what you're going to write is negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3, which gives us five groups of negative 3. And since, again, multiplication is just repeated addition, we can then solve, because you know how to add negative numbers. So a negative 5 plus a negative 5 is negative 10, plus another negative 5 is a negative 15. So we get the answer of negative 15. Okay, let's see what this one is. Negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3. So negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6 because a negative plus a negative is always a negative, and then you add the two values together. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 9. Negative 3, 6 or 9 plus 3 is negative 12, and negative 12 plus 3 is negative 15. So again, both of these have an answer of negative 15 because you have three groups of negative 5 and you have five groups of negative 3. Pretty self-explanatory. All right. Um, so the next thing I want you to think about is what if your groups are negative? Not the numerical value, but the groups. So the question I want you to think about is can you have negative groups? All right. And I'm pretty sure all of you would say yes because you've seen on the paper where it has said um, negative 3 times 5, right? So your question is, there has to be able to be a way that we can deal with negative groups. And the way that we do that is we use the number line. Okay? The number line can help us. So what you need to think about is if you have negative 3 groups of 5, remember on the number line, what does that negative sign represent? It represents that on a number line that you are going to travel to the left. So that means that we need to travel to the left three times, and the value that we have to travel is 5. So let's look at this number line really quickly. Okay. So here's our number line right here. Yes. 
And then on your number line, you are traveling to the left, which makes it negative. So we're traveling to the left, so that makes it negative. And then we have to go in segments of five. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to do it three times. And when you do that three times, look at where you end up on your number line. You end up on negative 15. So we now can see that negative 3 times 5 still gives us an answer of negative 15, just like it did up there. Okay, so now let's look at negative 5 times 3. So that means that on the number line, instead of going um, to the left only 3 times, how many times are we going to go? We're going to go to the left 5 times this time in shorter chunks of 3. So here's the number line. Sorry for the closeness, but I wanted you to be able to see it. So here we have our number line again. Start at 0. Go to the left because of that negative right there. 5 times of 3. So I go 1, 2, 3. That's 1. 1, 2, 3. That's 2. 1, 2, 3. That's 3. 1, 2, 3. That's 4. 1, 2, 3. That's 5. And I end up where? At negative 15. So a negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. A negative 3 times 5 is a negative 15. And the number line shows us how to do that. So the thing that I want you to take away from this number line model is that it tells you going to the left on a number line represents the negative group number. So if this group number happens to be negative, which direction do you go on the number line? You go to the left. Okay? All right. So that's multiplying. Now, some of you are thinking, okay, is there another way to show multiplication? And the answer is yes, but I have to move to the next page. So on the next page, first thing you're supposed to do, I've been seeing a lot of kids lately not doing this, so please, 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 please put your title on all of your pages, Multiplication and Division of Integers. And so now we need to talk about what happens when your group number and your numerical value number are both negative. Because on this side over here, we only talked about it when one of them was negative. Now I want to know what do you do when they're both negative, okay? So again, let's go back to what we were looking at before. And I have a negative 3 times a negative 5. That means both of the factors are negative. What I want you to see is that the chip model really helps us understand this. I did one where both of them are positive because you know how to do this, and this is comfortable. So we're going to be comparing what's comfortable to the unknown so that you can see what's happening. Okay, so again, we label our factors, and we have that this is a negative number of groups, a negative numerical value, then positive number of groups with a positive numerical value. So we're just labeling what the parts of are the expression R, okay? Now, this is where it gets different. What you probably already know or could have figured out by now is that when you use the chip model for both positives, this is what it's going to look like. And you've learned this earlier on in your schooling, like maybe fifth grade, fourth grade. But when you have 3 times 5, a lot of you've learned about arrays. And so what this means is you have three groups of 5. And the thing we have to remember is that it's three groups of positive 5. Yes? Okay. So the way that we draw a picture of this using the chip model is you draw exactly what this says, three groups of 5. So there's one group of 5, there's another group of 5, and there's another group of 5 right there. Well, when I draw three groups of 5 and they all happen to be positive, what's the answer? 15. You are correct. So that's pretty easy. Learn that in like I said, fourth or fifth grade. Well, now that you are working with this in seventh grade, your new job is to figure out how to deal with it when you have a negative group amount and a negative numerical amount. So how in the world are we going to do that? Well, the key to this is understanding what this says. Remember, this is the number of groups. But this little negative, when we dealt with it on the number line, it told you to go to the left. When you go to the left on the number line, you are showing a picture of a loss, okay? You're losing 
space. You're losing numerical value. So this negative is now known as a loss. Okay, everybody needs to think when your group value or your group number is negative, you need to think of it as a loss. When your numerical value has a negative, that tells you the actual sign on the chips. Okay, did everybody hear me? So I have three groups of negative five that I'm going to lose. So I'm going to lose the groups of five that happen to be negative. Now you're trying to figure this out. Okay. The thing I need you to remember whenever you see an expression written like this is zero pairs are your friends, okay? And so what I would like you to do is I would like you to draw zero pairs that represent this, okay? So I know that I have to have negative five. So I'm going to do my negative fives are right here. One, two, three, four, five, and they're all negatives. Then I'm going to do another one. One, two, three, four, five. They're all negatives. Then I'm going to do one more set. One, two, three, four, five. They're all negatives. But the problem is here is that we have to lose them. And right now we can't lose them because we don't have anything connected to them. So we're going to create a connection by creating zero pairs. So go ahead and draw in your zero pairs all the way down in your group. Again, we have three groups, okay? And the reason that we're putting the zero pairs in there is because we need to lose something. Now, can I ask a quick question? When you have zero pairs, what value is here? Zero, 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 okay? But if I am supposed to lose, remember, this means lose, lose all of the negative fives, okay? So what I need to do is I need to take this negative 5 and lose it. Talked about this yesterday in class. I need to take this negative 5 and lose it. I need to take this negative 5 and lose it. Now when you circle them and draw the arrows like that, you're showing that it's a loss. So we're going to write loss right here. And then your answer to this expression right here is what is still there. So what is left? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the answer to this expression, negative 3 times a negative 5 is a 15. Okay? And here is all of it written down. Now remember, this picture right here is a loss of three groups of negative 5. And then we drew the picture to show what that looks like. Okay? So I need everybody to study this for a minute. Okay, so we have our zero pairs here, three groups of five zero pairs. Then it tells us that we have to lose all the negative fives. So again, circle all the negative fives, lose them. Circle all of the negative fives, lose them. Circle all of the negative fives, lose them. And then your answer to this expression is what do you have left over? You have 15 positive counters. So the answer to a negative 3 times a negative 5 is a positive 15. Okay? I know. It's crazy. So a negative times a negative gives you a positive. A positive times a positive gives you a positive. Huh. That's pretty crazy. Um, over here, in order to take away the negatives, you must have some. So that's why we use zero pairs. Okay? So hopefully that explains that for multiplication. You now know how to multiply a positive number and a negative number. That's with the number line over on this side. You now know how to multiply a negative times a negative number because of the chip model. You already knew how to multiply a positive times a positive, and you still get a positive because that's the only thing available. There's one more thing. If we go back to our title, it says multiplication and division of integers. So I have a quick question to see if you're listening. What is the opposite operation of multiplication? Anybody? The opposite operation of multiplication. The opposite operation of multiplication is division. So your next challenge, and I am making it a challenge, and this is the end of our notes, but I want to give a challenge to you to see if you can do it. The question that I have for you is, does the chip model work for division? 
So now that you saw what we had to do to do all of the multiplication, my question for you is, if you have a positive set of numbers and you divide them by a negative set of numbers, how do you find the answer? Because remember, this little negative right here tells you that it's a loss, so you're losing something. But you have to lose the negative amount right? So I want you to think about it. And then this is where it gets even more tricky. Over here, we have a negative amount, and then we're dividing it into groups of three that have to be lost as well. And so what do you think the answer is for those? So that's what I'm looking for, kiddos, okay? Your challenge is to see if you can figure out the rule for division and if it works using the chip model. And I'll give you a hint, it does, because I know how to do this, and I do have the answer. And we're going to discover it tomorrow in class, okay? So going back to our question or our goal for the lesson is today we will learn how to use integers in multiplication and division. We're almost done with that goal. We'll finish it up in class tomorrow. What are the rules used with multiplying and dividing integers? I'm pretty sure you're set with multiplication, and we'll finish up with the division in class tomorrow. All right? So I think that's about it. Hopefully, if you have any questions or you're confused, you will ask me tomorrow. Um, remember, it's Wednesday, and so it will be short in time, so we'll be working primarily on this tomorrow. All right. Have a great evening. I'll see you then. Bye.